front part of the meeting, but when it comes to the question and answer part of the meeting, uh, we are not going to record that part. This way you can feel free to ask any questions or make any comments or whatever and not worry about anything in terms of um, recording. Yeah. So she is. So thank so let's begin. Yes, let's begin with a prayer. So loving God, we thank you for this time to gather. We thank you for the inspiration of St. Francis of Assisi, for St. Clair as well, for the spirituality that they brought all of us through the living life simply and being aware of the gift of all creation and the gift of our brothers and sisters. We ask that you might be with us now. Your spirit, your Holy Spirit has moved us and guided us in so many ways throughout our journey as we began, from the time that we began. And we look forward to the ways that you continue to lead us as we move forward. Thank you for the constancy of your presence, for your incredible love, for your compassion, and fill us with your peace and your love for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's uh, absolutely wonderful to see all these beautiful faces from the church here. <laughs> To see everybody together again, you know, I wish, uh, and those people that are going to be watching this on video later, uh, we miss, we we're missing your, your presence here right now, but uh, we're loving the fact that you're tuning in and watching this later on and, uh, and receiving the information that the parish can uh, share. Um, the topic of the meeting, the, the Holy Spirit's movement in Mary Magdalene Church, it doesn't take long to be in Mary Magdalene Church before you feel that. <laughs> you feel where that comes from over and over again in so many different ways. It's a wonderful topic for this uh, parish community forum. And um, with all that in mind and uh, the thankfulness of uh, having the presence of everybody together, uh, I'm gonna turn this now over to Bob. Mm -hmm. And Bob's going to bring our, uh, our screen up uh, for us, our PowerPoint. Yeah. Wow, impressive. There we go, isn't it? I know, <laughs> I know. There we are. Very good. So, um, so yes. Thank you, Bob. Now, are you seeing, are you seeing just the one picture or are you seeing two? No, we're seeing the next slide pictures as All right, well. So let me, so let me change that. Change that, yep. I want to go to uh, I think slideshow. Yeah, but I it has to do with the screen sharing. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, if you get it up the way you want to see it on your screen. Give me a second to find the, all those controls which have hidden themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're patient. That's what I got to do. Okay, now I got a screen share. Screen two. I believe me. I'm very appreciative for somebody who knows something about screen sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I can manage to figure it out when I have to, but. Uh -huh. All right, are you seeing just the one now? No, we're yeah. seeing everybody, but we're not seeing any your screen at all. And if not, well, nope, we'll get there. It's okay. We're all patient. Mhm. Mm well, shall I just begin, and then you can pop it when you get it? Okay. I just need to know that you're seeing the right thing. Okay. Come on. I think we're all glad that you're doing this and none of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
have, uh, oh, sure. we're not seeing any of, uh, we're just seeing the gallery uh, of people. We're not seeing any of your stuff. <clears throat> I think the share screen part stopped. Yes, it seems to have. My mouse is acting very funny and it's bouncing everything all over the place. Hmm. Hmm. I'll this happened to me when I was giving a webinar with a hundred people. <laughs> At least we're a friendly group. Yes. Oh, some say there we go. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we got a blue screen now. We're getting close. You can see Your mouse jumping. jumping. Give it some cheese. Hey, there we are. Hey, hey. All right. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Welcome. So, um, and you can go right to the, the next slide. So the pastor's update today. And the, the spirits movement in our community. Um, you know, I, I often think about the fact that when I began Mary Magdalene Church 11 years ago, I had no idea where the journey was going. And those of you who have been with us through our uh, many transitions from um, being the uh, BYOC church where everybody had to bring their own chair to finding our, our uh, church home now, being able to um, purchase that. I mean, there's just been so many ways that we have felt the spirit moving in us and among us. And um, it's just really helped me it's helped to remind me to trust in the spirit and that she will lead us always to the next step. And as a result, we've already been able to do some beautiful things. And what I love, I absolutely love our community. I love the um, inspiration that all of you give to me. I love how seriously you give to this community and see that as uh, being um, an important part of your life. And you take this to be your spiritual home. And that means the world to me. And that's why I really do see myself continuing to serve for a lot of years. But I also realize um, that in order to do that, I need to do it a little bit differently. Um, as you know, the, the summer was tough with both of my uh both my dad with the quadruple bypass and my mom's um pain that has been absolutely um unlivable at at many times for her and then on top of that as a church community as a world as uh, in our personal lives we were dealing with COVID-19 figuring out how to lead a community through that um, and, and continue to have this community be a vibrant way to connect. And, and then through the racial um, justice issues that, that have come to the fore. There's so many important things um, that our world and our community is calling us to. And um, my parents are doing better, so that's a good thing. But what I've realized is that the last several months, have reminded me of the importance of family. And I know that we're moving into a time when there are going to be additional needs in, in my family that I need to be available for and a part of. And trying to do all of this while at the same time leading a community as the sole pastor has been more than a little um, difficult and stressful. Um, um, Believe me, we have great leadership in this community. Um, Mimi, I could not have gotten through the summer without her. Um, and she would pick up pieces that I didn't even know I dropped. And, um, and just do it seamlessly. <coughs> and then the leadership, <laughs> excuse me, the leadership that we have in um, our trustees, in the ministry team um, in our succession planning team has just been really um, beautiful and so very important and helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, as I have 
really tried to balance it all over the summer. Uh, I really became aware that it was un untenable for me to continue to try to keep it all going. Um, it was exhausting. It was difficult. I didn't feel like I was serving our community in the best way possible. Over the summer, there were so many things I knew that we could do, but I didn't have the, um, the bandwidth to, to do it in the midst of it all. And so um, I would, um, so I really had to take a look at all of that. Um, and that, I, that uh, led me to turn to the succession planning team. Now, our succession planning team has been working um, very directly from one of our guiding principles and something that's been so important for me from the very beginning. <clears throat> and that is that Mary Magdalene Church is the, the uh, value of continuity is meant to be a community that will thrive beyond its original founders. A community that will serve not only today's generation, but will be there to serve our children and our children's children. And so this team has been meeting since the spring. And my original thought had been that this team would roll out the work that it's doing over the course of the next year or so. And that after that, I would begin to step back a bit to make room for the community to step forward and for next leadership to come in. Now, let me tell you, when I say I need to do it differently, that's what I'm saying. I am not leaving Mary Magdalene Church, but I need um, more to be able to do what I can do. Um, and I had envisioned that, you know, this process would take the next few years. But the summer made me realize I couldn't live with that time frame, and I felt I was really struggling. Because as important an undertaking as the transition will be when we are at the point of going to next uh, pastor, I didn't want to short circuit that. <clears throat> and so I turned to the succession planning team um, because I didn't know what to do or how to, how to handle it. And I will say that it was one of the moments that I felt the Holy Spirit actively working in our community. I came into the meeting in turmoil and came out of the meeting in peace. And that's a testament to the beautiful leadership that we have in this community. Oh, thank you. He found me some halls. Thank you. <clears throat> I told you this morning I could feel that voice going out there. Now it is decided to go. There we mm -hmm. go. So as a result of the meeting and the work that the succession planning team did along with me, I knew and came out of it knowing even more that I wasn't ready to step out of the pastoring role. But in order to continue in the pastoring role, I need some additional support. And the um, idea that emerged from there absolutely brought tears to my eyes. The team proposed that I would reduce my hours working as pastor and that we would bring in a part-time interim associate pastor who would be there to support me but also support and minister within this beautiful community. We made the decision that this would be an interim position, meaning temporary, meaning transitional, so that our community continue, can continue to do the work that will be needed when we are looking for a new pastor. In this way, we do not short circuit our succession planning team. I continue to lead our community, but that I'm no longer the solo pastor in this community. I have an interim associate uh, pastor to work with me. Then we ask the question, who might fill this interim position? Well, that didn't take long. 
in the succession planning team because we had the realization that we already have someone in this community who, independent of this team's work, independent of when we're coming to the point of leadership, new leadership, had already been working or already had been, had identified her call to ordination who'd completed her, um, of the vast majority of her education and has begun the process of ordination with the ECC. And the discernment team was really at the end of their work in um, being able to recommend her for ordination. And that, of course, was Lori Vale. <clears throat> Lori has been very loved and um, has touched many of you already. She's been on our ministry team for the past year, since shortly after she and Rebecca found us, which was last August. And it, it, felt, it felt right. We then brought this to the trustees and did the further work that was needed in trying to figure out our next steps. And out of that, it became, we decided that effective January 1st, I would cut my hours in half and Lori Vale will officially begin <clears throat> as our interim associate pastor. <coughs> I'm going to ask Lori to introduce herself now. We're going to do a little flip in our screens so I can catch this, um, my voice back. So Lori, can you take it? Hello, yes. I'm Lori Vale. I believe I know every single one of you that's on this meeting right now. And Denise asked me to share a little bit about myself with you all as part of the announcement of what's happening. I'll begin by saying that I am honored in a way I can't even describe to be asked to serve the community in this way. And I use that language very intentionally, serve the community. Can I, I have to ask a question and I apologize for interrupting. That's okay. Perhaps it would be useful to see you on the full screen instead oh, okay. of your little postage stamp person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Sorry to no, interrupt. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for interrupting. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it doing what you all want now? Yes. Okay, thank great. You. Perfect. Um, so, as I was saying, I, I very intentionally use the words serve the community because that is not only how I see what I've been asked to do here. Um, in essence, my serving as a transitional interim person, which is uh, a short-term move, allows us to keep Denise pastoring in this community as long as possible. And so in service to her and in service to the community at large, I'm also able to serve as part of my call. I have felt a call to ordain ministry since I was eight years old and have never understood how that could play out in any way that made sense. I grew up in a church that did not allow the ordination of women. And right about the time I figured out that other churches existed that do allow the ordination of women, I also figured out that I was gay. <laughs> and in the 1990s, even the churches that ordained women didn't ordain gay women. So it has taken 40 years for me to find that God's path really was right in front of me. It just wasn't going to happen necessarily in the ways that I had predetermined it ought to or would. And so to be asked to help in this manner at this time of transition is an honor and is a service that I'm eager to provide. I know, as I said, most of you, and yet you don't necessarily know much about me in terms of how 
I would fill this role. And so I would ask you to please reach out, ask any questions you want via email, call me, set up an appointment with me. We'll wear our masks. We'll sit outside and do whatever we need to do. I am happy to talk with you to answer any questions you have because this community means more to me than anything other than my children and my marriage. And in that way, I need to be available to what you need to have answered and what you need to have heard. So please, this brief introduction is only a start of a conversation. Reach out and I will be happy to continue the conversation with you in any way that you choose. Denise, are you feeling a little bit better? <laughs> I, uh, yes, yes, I've regained some of my voice, so thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> and, and so you can see, already there is this ability to have this back and forth. <laughs> Lori already, already is picking up uh, for me. Um, I, you know, I'm, I must say I am very excited about this next step. Um, and when I walked out of that succession planning team and it all had fallen into place, I felt tremendous peace in my heart because I, I knew that this is what was right. And um, we'll go through in, the, in a few minutes, we'll look at some just the nuts and bolts and, you know, um, and whatnot. But I, what I want you to know is that I am going to continue as your pastor. Lori will be pastoring um, with me in an associate and interim associate position. And, um, and this will um, begin officially on January 1st, and it is slated for a year. And then, then at that time, we'll see where the spirit is leading us and figure out what will follow. I continue to see myself in this role for some time to come. At the end of the year, we still will have work to do in figuring out where we're going. And um, my dedication to uh, Mary Magdalene Church began on day one, and began on day one with the prayer that when the right time comes, the spirit will lead. Um, Lori will begin to take on parts of that role immediately. This gives her a chance to transition. It gives me a chance to also be able to train her and give Lori some of the information that she will need to serve the community in this role. What I <clears throat> felt in terms of the spirit leading us, um, I'll, I'll remind people, um, our last actually well, our, our parish forum in June, it might have been our last actual official one, I think it was. The succession planning team was um, presenting on the work that they had been asked to um, do on behalf of, of the trustees. And while, they, while the team was talking about it, a whole herd of deer had all of a sudden come through the, the parking lot and the side yard and, and whatnot here at church. And there were about six deer right underneath my window. And if you were on that call, you may remember how excited I was and how uh, Phil took pictures for me and we got them up for everybody to see. And um, it was just for me such a sign of the uh, spirit's work and now i realize that the spirit has delivered yet again in bringing laurie and rebecca last august to mary magdalene church and putting putting her and them in the right spot at the right time i, I know that change can create you know, sometimes feelings of uneasiness, but I hope that this sense of peace that I feel, I hope that hearing uh, Lori speak of um, her love for this community, her call that has been there for um, a, a very long time, and the ways that all of this has moved has um, 
is fills you with some of that excitement and hope as well. And so we want to take just a, a, a couple of minutes. Here are the deer. And we have a song to just kind of take a few minutes and let all of this sink in prayerfully. And then we'll talk about just some of the specifics and be able to then um, go into an opportunity for questions and answers. So, so thanks. So Bob, if you can um, put our song up there with a familiar face. Thank you, Kathy English for recording. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> it's not the Holy Spirit that's in possession of your computer right now. <laughs> it's my mouse. <laughs> it is your mouse. <laughs> I could do a live performance. The spirit. Yeah, we'll just we'll don't let what? it go with that. <laughs> Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Thank you, Lori. Or, I mean, Lori. Thank you, Lori, too. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> oh, and me there now. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, Kathy. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to just kind of address uh, at this point just some of the things that may be questions or wonderings um, that you have. And as we do that, I want to um, let everybody know that I'm not leaving. Please hear that. Uh, you will 
uh, still have me hanging with you for a while. You can't get rid of me quite that easily just yet. So uh, this community is very important uh, to me. And even when we're at the point <clears throat> where we're beginning to look for the next leader, I will be working with that individual over a period of a few years to transition into the position and slowly I will, I will step back as he or she steps forward. And we are not assuming that we have any um, uh, plan in terms of who that is right now. That wouldn't be fair for the community. It wouldn't be fair for Lori. And um, this gives us the, the time that we need. I also uh, want to share a little bit, and I'm going to ask Bob and then Jim to share um, a little bit more about how the uh, decision was made, because this truly came out of the um, succession team, planning team, and then uh, we worked uh, with the trustees, um, teams within our community that are very important to all of us. So Bob, if you could um, share uh, first on that, that'd be great. Thank you, Denise. <clears throat> it was really a, quite a surprise to me when we had our regular meeting. We'd been meeting roughly once a month or every three weeks since the spring, and it was about a month or so ago. When we started the meeting, I could tell from the look on Denise's face that something was troubling her. And then she opened the meeting by saying, I'm really struggling. And the rest of the story you heard from Denise. And while I was listening to her and watching her face and watching her body language, an idea was starting to form in, in my head. And it was sort of a shape. It wasn't words or anything. It was a shape. And Denise looked at me. She said, Bob, something's going on in your head up there. And so I, I do what I have found works best when the spirit is active, and that is I just start talking and let the words come through me that way. And what emerged was a vision of a job sharing. Uh, many years ago, my wife was in a situation where she was going back to school. She had been a nurse manager at the hospital, and she entered into a job share with a partner that allowed both of them to grow and to transition for quite a few very positive years. So that image came to mind. And then I started to try to describe it. And then I think maybe it was Chris that said, well, yeah, uh, interim associate, we kicked around some words and the spirit was kind of swirling around in this discussion that we had on Zoom and everybody contributed and we could sort of see this potential pathway. And then I could see the light in Denise's eyes change. She, she all of a sudden got this sort of peaceful look about her like, yeah, this could work. This could be the, the pathway that works best for the community and for me and for my family. It was a really powerful moment. And, um, and I, uh, at Denise's suggestion, I wanted to share that with you and know that the, the succession planning uh, team, we then deliberated for quite a while about lots of other details uh, to make sure we were not jumping quickly to a conclusion but at the, end of the, at the end of our hour and a half meeting, we were feeling very, very peaceful with our meeting. And then there were next steps that would follow, which was Denise talking to Lori and then the rest of the process. So uh, I will now uh, pass it off to Jim. Maybe he'll talk about the rest of the process. Yeah, thank you. So speaking of that rest of the process, uh, so shortly after um, that initial meeting that Denise had, uh, it was time for the regularly scheduled board meeting, um, which again was held by Zoom. Um, we do have a few of the uh, board members on the call today. Um, so Vinny, uh, Sue Pagano, uh, Bill Smith is with us. Um, uh, I'm a trustee as well. Um, at present, I'm the chairperson. Um, and Regine Calvar is one of the trustees. Uh, and Marcy Casillo, Casilio, sorry, is um, was also one. And then Pat Moriarty is, is part of the group as the moderator. Jean Higgins is our secretary. Obviously, Denise uh, is in the meetings, um, not as a trustee, but as a, as a, uh, as a uh, member of the group. And she came to us and let us know, uh, you know, the, the struggle that she was having uh, time-wise, uh, tension-wise, um, you know, that, that was, uh, 
not surprising at all. I mean, I think we all saw the amount of effort that the COVID uh, and the pandemic uh, took. You know, and certainly the trustees were, were offering support. We had a few extra meetings, but really uh, Denise bore the brunt of it. Uh, with all the planning, all the decisions, all the uh, you know coordinating that had to happen in order for us to continue, um, and then obviously on top of that, um, the the situation and the amount of time and and effort that it took uh, with both of her parents. So she she came to the trustees, uh, you know, essentially with the request to reduce her time, to reduce her hours. Um, and to bring on some some extra help for her to to get through this, um, you know, sharing the the idea of an associate pastor, somebody who could really uh, you know take a lot of her load, but also that it would be interim. You know, we we have a process that we're going through for a succession. Uh, we're not we're not jumping any guns. And we're not tying uh, anybody into anything, you know, permanent. Um, and so initially, uh, and, and really without uh, too much debate, uh, you know, we were able to say, yes, all right, we, we recognize the need for you to, to get some help, to be able to reduce your, um, the, your, the footprint of the amount of time that you are spending at church um, or with church and, and be able to get some real, true, valuable assistance that would let you kind of continue doing what the community needs. So that was really the kind of the first thing that we decided that, yes, we would move forward with the concept of an interim associate pastor Continued working over the weeks with a few extra uh, meetings. Um, you know, we, we did want to, we did really kind of want to follow protocol, if you will. Um, you know, things with, with the spirit are, you know, that's what the spirit wants to do. Um, you know, things with job descriptions and positions and things like that, you know, you, you got to kind of follow um, whatever the protocol or whatever, you know, the, the guidelines are that we have in place, make sure that we're doing things correctly. So we did um, ask Denise to work on a job description um, for this position, which would include the, uh, you know, the background qualifications that somebody would have to have, what are we really talking about, where do they have to be, um, any sort of like regulatory or, or uh, government related impact um, to do with job descriptions and titles. So we worked through that um, and, and came up with a, you know, a, a, a good, I mean, a solid job description. I mean, if, if you're going to get hired somewhere, that's what you'd want to see. Um, and really had everything in place. Uh, you know, we we're aware that uh, Lori Vale was the, uh, was the candidate that, that seemed to fit all of the qualifications. Um, and, and that, uh, you know, she would likely be receptive to the position. So once we had all of our ducks in a row, if you will, from a, you know, a, a job uh, framework, um, then uh, Denise and I did sit down with Lori on Friday and uh, offered her the position, went through the job description, the requirements, the time frames, the, it's every, everything. And uh, I don't know if you can see the enthusiastic response, but she was quite enthusiastic and <laughs> um, accepting the position. So, you know, just to kind of make the point that we, we did make sure that we kind of followed uh, what you really should do in, in creating and offering a position to somebody uh, within the church. Um, and, you know, again, thanks to really everybody on the board of trustees, um, you know, the voting uh, trustees and everybody that provides their input and their their efforts uh, to the trustees um, in getting this uh, together for 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 Denise and for Lori um, and we did review her her resume and her background which is really interesting and impressive um, but just her story which is probably uh, more important than 
school and, and things like that she has done, which obviously is important, but just her, you know, the bit of her background that she shared and everything else about um, what she's really looking to do um, in her life. Uh, just really, it, it's just, it's a beautiful match, I think. Um, but uh, we, we got that done and, and we're very happy um, to move forward with this. Thanks, Jim. Let's, thank you. So the, our teams at Mary Magdalene are, um, are a very important part of um, how, how, we, how we move and how we operate. Um, and I love the fact that this came um, as a result of working with those teams uh, and responding to where I was at. So um, now, so the position itself that we have uh, invited and um, uh, uh, Lori into is the uh, interim associate pastor. And you may say, well, um, what does that mean? Because Lori is not ordained. And that is very true. Uh, Lori is working towards her ordination. Um, and uh, that is important for uh, something that is, especially for something that is not an, an interim position. And normally you would look for somebody who was ordained. Um, the fact of the matter is when you have somebody right there with all of the gifts, with all of the talents, who's already in the process, um, the fact that she is not yet ordained um, is not as big an issue because I am still here and I'm remaining here. So I am here for anything that requires sacramental presence. We also at Mary Magdalene Church though believe in lay leadership and uh, have involved the uh, ministry team and, and um, others throughout the years as well in that, pro in that role of uh, leading liturgies when I'm out of town and, um, and preaching, et, et cetera. So we believe in lay leadership and we have, um, the, have processes by which Lori, when I am out of town or unavailable, will be able to lead the liturgy not celebrate mass, that is reserved for, um, you know, those who are ordained as priests as a part of what we believe in our, in our Catholic heritage, um, but uh, able to do, you know, every other part of that. And so she would uh, lead uh, communion services like we've done in the past at times when I was not um, available or, or out of town. Um, Lori's credentials. Uh, I'll ask Lori to take just a minute to address that. I'm aware of our time, so I want to um, keep us moving so that we can also have time for questions. But um, but Lori can maybe speak for a minute to um, her credentialing, the education that she has had um, up to this point and, and experience. So yes, absolutely. So obviously, I have um, experience as a professor, I've spent the last 20 years teaching. So I come to this role with skills in terms of education, in terms of community building, because that's what classroom teaching is, and advocacy. I also spent time in nonprofits in the last 20 years and have done program <coughs> management for nonprofits as well as volunteer coordination and the like. But far more important, I think, for the role that I'm being asked to serve here is the education that I did at Colgate Rochester Crozier Divinity School. I received my master's in 2017 after completing coursework and all the things you would normally expect um, for a priest on the path to ordination to have taken courses in things like scripture, pastoral care, um, preaching, but more exciting to me and why I chose to go to the alma mater of Denise as well is that the school is known for its innovation in theological thinking, particularly in terms of black church studies and studies focused on women, gender and perspectives on faith that are outside the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So my coursework in those particular topics is what I'm most proud of because they make it a part of my theological thinking and my educational thinking to be as loving and inclusive as possible, which is what I believe Mary Magdalene is so unique in providing. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Lori. Um, the uh, position uh, is, as I said, for one year. 
And you may wonder um, what kinds of things Lori will be doing. Um, and so we will, I'm going to be um, putting out a bulletin um, uh, later on. Probably it'll probably be tomorrow um, that that goes out. But that will include some of the information that we've talked about. And along with that, um, I can um, include the uh, job description as well. And what you'll see is that really Lori will have responsibilities in regard to pastoral leadership and guidance um, to, com and to communication. She'll be helping um, especially with the uh, bulletin as well. She'll be writing the letters some weeks um, in addition to uh, the opposite weeks that I will be doing. She could um, be doing anything from, um, you know, Bible studies and uh, leading groups and uh, administration straight of functions. She will work um, with our board of trustees as well as I do and as well as Mimi does. Um, she will, uh, you know, be, we will together be at liturgy unless one or both, well, it won't be both, but unless one of us is out of town, um, we will together be um, at, our, at our masses um, and they, those will be communion services when I'm out of town and, and Lori will um, be available to lead those and she'll be preaching. Um, we'll be sharing in the uh, responsibility of preaching as well. Those bring, um, I, I just can't tell you what um, a huge piece that is because the amount of time that it takes even to write a bulletin. Um, it takes a great deal of time. And then um, uh, preaching as well. So she will report to me. Um, I do continue to be the pastor. And uh, so if there's, you know, any, uh, anything that ever comes up, um, I always say the buck stops here. I, I own responsibility and accountability. Lori will as well as part of her job. But when we look at, you know, the, um, you know, the processes, that's, that's how that will work. And that's how I work very collaboratively. And as I think you can see already, we work together very well, um, which, is, which is really great. And the other piece of it is that the succession planning team will be continuing its work. That work will continue to fold, unfold and be laid out through this um, course of the next year or so. And the community, when we're at the point where I'm getting ready to step back from the role of pastoring, um, again, as I said, I'll work in tandem with someone who comes into that role for a few years, because I don't think it's, it's fair for a community for the, the pastor to suddenly disappear, which is what often happens. And then the new leader is kind of like, okay, who are these, you know, this community and, and what do they need? So I see that as, as being a collaborative process that will unfold over the next few years. Um, but this is not a, a substitution to the work that needs to be done. That work will continue <laughs> and will be done appropriately by the community. Um, before we take some questions and answers, uh, I think that Bob has a um, picture here. So uh, Lori, uh, gave this to me. Um, uh, today she gave it to me. She told me about it the other day because she couldn't keep it any longer to herself. This is a creation of her son, Kellen. And it is meant to represent a grove of sequoia trees. In um, March or April, the very beginning when COVID was happening, I used um, a story that has always meant a lot to me from a time when our children were little and we went um, cross country. And we went to the giant sequoias in um, uh, Northern uh, uh, California that I can't imagine with the wire fires that they've had there and everything else. But, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the giant sequoia trees are thousands of years old. Some of them are believed to be as old as, as uh, Christ, you know, the, that when Christ was walking on this earth. And it was, um, when we went out there, 
I was trying to teach our children. So I assumed they must have really deep roots. And so we're talking with the ranger because how could these trees survive for so long? And what we learned was that sequoia trees have very shallow roots, but they will only grow in groves. And what they do is they intertwine their roots under the surface of the soil so that when the storms come, they support one another. They build community. I had used this um, I've used that example at various times, but apparently I used it in the beginning of our COVID days. And it had really moved Lori and she began to look for um, a graphic that might represent that. And not finding that, I'll let her explain it just uh, quickly in a minute, but in April, she spoke with her son, Kellen, about uh, this desire. He's a graphic artist and he literally sent it to her this week and uh so Lori, do you want to just say a, a word about that sure and what it means to you yeah yes, so on coffee hour after denise had given this sermon many of us were talking about how powerful an image that was and i offered to go looking for an image to represent this for us all couldn't find anything and so I spoke to my oldest child, Kellen, who, as Denise said, is a graphic designer and said, I really wanted an image to represent this. And Kellen said, well, I'll do it. So as we talked a little bit further, I encouraged Kellen to check out the work of Ada Bethune, who is a, an artist who's most famous for the work that was in the Catholic Workers newspaper. Mm -hmm. Because that work from the 40s, 50s, and 60s is just burned in my imagination as part of the Catholic traditional identity. And when Kellen saw the work, he was overwhelmed by it. And so represented the giant sequoias in his representation of what Ada Bethune might have built the image to look like. And as Denise said, after pestering him forever and finally giving up about when he was going to send it to me, out of the blue, it showed up on Friday. So it couldn't have been more <laughs> perfect timing. That's great. And it has the rays of the sun behind it. They remind me the band underneath there. Um, the, the line at the bottom is meant to be the setting, or, uh, setting sun or rising moon. But when I saw it, it reminded me of the Virgin of Guadalupe and the horns that are at the bottom of that image. And so Kellen was like, oh my gosh, I must have internalized that and not even thought about it because as I created these, this trinity of trees, that just naturally became part of what I needed to represent. So, so that beautiful image arrived on Friday and here we have the Holy Spirit yet again, giving little nods along the way. And Bob says in this text, Mary Magdalene Church is a groom. It is cut into, what, did, linole, what is it, linoleum? It's a lino cut. So Kellen carved this image out of a piece of one color of linoleum, then inked it and transferred that ink image to a piece of paper. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So we would like to um, take a minute now to, if there's any questions, concerns, um, anything that comes that comes to mind uh that people may have i, th I think at this point uh the uh recording should Thank should you. end so that people can feel comfortable offering any uh, questions and concerns and if anybody in the audience wants to wants to then